Hi, my name is Brenda Young, and I just wanted to share a little tidbit with you out of uh, Psalms 25. You know, I was thinking about David as I was reading, and all the time I think about David when I read the Psalms, how that he was so honest before God and how he was called in the Bible. God called him a man after his own heart, David being a man after God's own heart. And that is so fitting for all of us if we, as believers to be children of God and after the heart of God. David knew how to repent before the Lord when he did wrong. And he really knew how to pray and ask the Lord to help him. And he even reminded him, you know, as we should do when we when we pray and, and give God back his word. <laughs> Not that he forgot, but that we would remember. He said he was tell God things that he said and remind him of what he said. And I tell you, I know that's very pleasing in the ears of the of, of the Lord for us to remind him of what he said. And uh, I just want to uh, just uh, share a little bit with you. In that first verse, uh, when David said to you, Anna and I, I lift up my soul. Our soul is our will, our mind and our emotions. And my God, when you're going through something, that's the thing to do. My God, lift up, lift up your soul. Tell the Lord, I lift up my will. I mean, I, I'm giving it over to you. you. You take care of this. My soul is my will, my mind, and my emotions. That's a lot. Because when things are going on, that's the very thing that gets all discombobulated, <laughs> if you want to say. Your soul. So we can take and give God, give everything over to God and wait on the Lord. As he goes on further to say, he wait for God. He says, oh my God, in you I trust. And my enemies will not gloat over me. Amen. He's speaking this thing, honey. He's believing God. Surely no one who waits for you will be ashamed. Surely no one who waits for you will be ashamed. My God. Have you ever been in a situation where you didn't know what to do? And you prayed and you asked the Lord in your own words, not in David's words, but in your own way. Lord, please, if you just help me out of this. Oh, my God. I just need you to come through. And uh, let's say some might have some something might have happened, and you was told on or you were lied on, and you want to be vindicated out of that lie. And you ask the Lord to help you and to let things prove that this is not what happened, and that the truth would be told. Well, I tell you, give it to God, and He will do just that. Amen. As you don't get discombobulated with your emotions, your mind, and your will. Give it over to God. That's what he says. He tells us to give him our burdens. For he can handle them. You see what I'm saying? He can take care of them. But when we want to take care of things on our own, and we, we think, we, I got this. We just make things even worse. But boy, I have seen the Lord come in at times when I have given things over to the God, to the Lord and it comes out. So it's not, you know, the enemy, he, what he does, he'll take and make things bigger than what they really are. He'll give you the worst scenarios that can happen in a situation. And then your emotions just go with, with that scenario. That's, that's why you can't think on those things. You have to think on what God says and not what your emotions try to run you rapid. The enemy put things in your mind and you just go crazy with what could could happen. And then when you give it over to God, none of those things happen. <laughs> he just set you up so that you can be so emotional and out of control that you can't even think clearly or even act 
right in the situation. But when you give it to God, hallelujah, when you give it to the Lord, hallelujah, and trust him and wait on him, he will vindicate you. He will do what needs to be done to make that thing right. And sometimes it takes a while, but you know he's got it. You got to give it to him. You know he's got it. He got your back. You got a relationship with the Lord and you seeking to please the Lord and walking with him. He has your back. Believe me, I have seen him do it in many, many instances, in many situations. He have your back. Praise God. He goes on to say, David goes on to say, Oh my God, in you I trust, so I will not be ashamed. Amen. He said, but the treacherous without cause will be ashamed. Folks that's trying to uh, stick you up or put you in a bad rap or make you look bad or whatever, the treacherous person that's lying or trying to get over whatever, they'll be ashamed. See, give it over to God. Hallelujah. He knows how to handle it way better than you can handle it anyway. God knows. You may not even see that person get what's coming to him, but that's okay. You know he got your back. It's not even all that important. You just know he's got it. Let him have it. Give it to him. Stop trying to handle it yourself. Give it to God. Hallelujah. Just like David. Hallelujah. Amen. So he says, he goes on to say, show me your ways. Anna and I, show me your ways. See, the, the ways of the Lord is not our ways. The scripture tells us our thoughts is not his thoughts and our ways are not his ways. Amen. As far as the heavens is from the earth, so God ways is not our ways and his thoughts, not our thoughts. And I tell you what, they are so much better. <laughs> we know this. It's so much better. He said, teach me your path. Guide me in your truth and teach me for you are God, my salvation. You're my deliverer. You, gonna, you, you got my back. You're my deliverer. You will see me through. You will see me through. I have no doubt you will see me through. <coughs> Excuse me. And he goes on to say, guide me in your truth and teach me for you are God, my salvation. For you, I wait all day. All day, David says. That should be all day and every day. Amen. But praise the Lord. We wait on God. Wait on him. Be patient and wait on him. Remember, Adonai, your compassions and your mercies, for they are from eternity. Mm, praise the Lord. According to your mercy, remember me. For the sake of your goodness, Adonai, you're good. You're good and you're upright, Adonai. He's telling God, you're so good and you're upright. Oh, you're going to do what's right because God going to do right by us. Even sometimes we don't do right. You know, he always do right by you. Nah. Don't you know that? Oh, he is so good. His mercies is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. The Lord is good. Bless his holy name. Mm, hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Jesus. He guides the humble in what is right and teach the humble in his way. Humble is the way. Proud. Destruction comes to the proud. The Bible tells us pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. You will fall being prideful. But when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, he will exalt you in due season. Let him exalt you. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Seek the Lord while he may be found and call up on him while he is near. Amen. His soul, 13, his soul abides in goodness and his offspring will inherit the land. He was talking about the man who chooses. My God, who is the man who fears God? Who fears Ananias? We all should as believers. 
And this is not a, ooh, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. No, this is a reverence, an honor. Because we know who he is. We know that he is God. It's just like with, with you and your parents. I know when I grew up, I didn't want to displease my parents. And I did things, you know. And it was consequences when I did things that wasn't things that I should be doing. But I feared them because I knew that they love. First of all, I knew they loved me and I knew it was going to correct me. And that's just what the Lord does to his children. The Bible tells us that he rebuke, love rebukes, corrects, and instructs. That's love. And you know this, this stuff today, sometimes people say you don't love them because... They can't have it their way. But you know, you can't have it your way. It's not like Burger King here. Obedience is supernatural. And we have to obey God. We can't have it our way. Or the highway. We cannot. That's not the way to walk in his ways. Praise God. His ways are obedient. Walking in obedience to what he says in his word. And allowing him to teach us his ways. Praise the Lord. David also said in 15. My eyes are always looking to Adonai. For he will pull my feet out of the net. Even if you will have been set up. You hear David? David said he will pull his feet out of the net. Praise the Lord. Mm. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. The troubles of my heart increase. Bring me out of my distress. Oh, my God. David knew how to talk to God. And that's how we need to know how to just talk to him. Oh, God. He says, see my affliction and my sufferings and take away all my sins. Amen. You know, I was thinking about it as I read that just now. Even as believers, you know, we do sin. And when we know we sin, we need to ask for forgiveness. We need to uh, be repentance, repentive every day. We need to be repentive every day. When we know we do something and it's not pleasing, we should ask God to forgive us. And he will. And we mean it. And we don't keep doing it over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. We learn and we just continue to move on from that. We don't wallow in it either because if God forgive you, you have to forgive yourself. I mean, that makes you think you are you better than God. If God can forgive you, come on, forgive yourself. Sometimes we can be harder on ourselves, harder on ourselves. And uh, that's not, a, it's not good either. But it's good to be able to repent and move on. I just wanted to share a little bit of that with you that I had read about when David was talking about teach, teaching him, asking God to teach him his, his path. And, uh, and thought about some things as I was reading about what David was saying, you know, highlighted it, things highlighted, came up and highlighted in my mind about things I've gone through. And um, a, lot, a lot of times we need a reminder the word of God is to remind us. Amen. That's why we read and continue to seek God and, and keep this mirror in front of us. So we won't forget what manner of man we are <laughs> and continue in the things of God. So I just wanted to share that a little bit with you. And I don't know if I told you or not, but I was reading from the Tree of Life version, which is a Messianic Jewish uh, family Bible. And I just love it. And I'm going to go now, but I'll be back and share with you again. And until then, be blessed. Allow the Lord to teach you his path. In Jesus' name, amen.